before revival, get up and go home. <laughs> Come on. I never in my life as a pastor said, I'll even give you back your offering too if you want it. I never done that. I said, Lord, have mercy. But I believe it was the seriousness of the hour. And when I look back at the video, I realized it didn't sound as mean as I thought it did. <laughs> you see, there was grace and love connected to it. Because I'm here to tell you right now, we're in living in a day that it's not time to play any games. It's not time to play church. It's not time to say, hey, I'm coming in and doing my duty and walking out there the same way. Sister Judy, it's time to have revival. It's time to say enough is enough. It's time to say we're taking back what God has given us. And we're going to hold true to what it is because he's true. And I know greater is he that is in us than that old devil that is in the world. True to that, praise God and glory. Hallelujah. Let's stand up together. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to have His way. Dear Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you once again for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, my Lord, for your awesome Holy Ghost that you sent down to us as a comforter, one that brought power, dear God, one that I feel is present here with us right now. I ask you, God, once again as we gather here to bless those that are in trouble, those that are struggling, those that need healing, God. I know you're here. And the Holy Ghost is here. The healer is here. And I'm asking you, Lord, for strength, a sound mind, dear Father, and love to be shown all the way through. We love you and we thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says amen and amen. Go ahead and worship here with this crew. Peace and
say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I'm never called. Come on. I don't ever want you to be in a worship service, a time to praise him, where a man tells you to sit down and worship him again. Come on. Okay. That's what it is. If we can ever get to that mindset. Now, I understand there's an order to the service. I know there is. And I'm telling you, my mindset coming up here with none of this. Once again. But I read where Paul told Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, it dealt with this. Not being afraid. But look at people in the face, and there's times when we must exhort, but rebuke in a sense. Of letting us know, letting people know, the church know, that we serve a God that is on the throne. And reminding people that He is God. And there must be a, a mindset of worshiping Him and praising Him. Thank you, I promise you this was not in the line to come up here and Matter of fact, I got Brother Jenny's going to come up here and share the word in here in a bit. But with that thought, let's remember who we are in Him. Let's remember who we are in Him. And let's remember who He is in us. There's never a, 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 a place where the Spirit of God as He's moving and knowing that those have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost is saying, I'm going to have you stand up, lift up your hand just a little while longer. We must be obedient to Him. And He is a Him. He's not an it. And I think that's the problem here. We've been led by an it for too long. Come on. We've been led by a Spirit, but it ain't been the Holy Ghost. It's been an it. There's even songs that sing about that it. Do you got it? What do you got? I ain't got no it. I got him. I have him, the Holy Ghost. He's with me. It ain't an it. You got it? No, I have him. I have him. I thank the Lord for that. I want to encourage you. Don't feel like you're knocked all out if you stand up and continue to worship. Don't think for one minute if you just going to stand there and worship God and, and you're going to be the odd one out. No, you'll be the one fulfilling the word of God. You'll be the one that will be in the sanctuary with hands high and worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. What spirit and in truth? I'm in trouble and I need help with spirit and in truth. I need to love Him and thank Him for what He's done. And I'm talking about the way that brings glory to God, not glory to self. I'm talking about a way that brings glory to Jesus, not glory to self, to flesh. Don't edify flesh, edify Christ. Let Christ be glorified. Praise the Lord, glory. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, right where you're at, can we lift up our hands again and just thank you? Oh, can we lift up our hands once again, if it's in you, and just thank you. Praise the Lord. Can we praise the Lord for a bit right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy. He's woke you up this morning. He's given you breath. He's given you life. He's given you hope. He's given you a, an opportunity to live according to His will and be a vessel. And it's a vessel of honor that brings glory unto Jesus. Oh, what a privilege that is. I don't want to take that for granted, church. I don't want to take that for granted. I want to know that He knows that we know that we love Him and we're glad to be in His presence. We're glad to congregate together. We're glad to be in one mind and one accord. We're glad we're not chained up there and locked up in prison, addicted to drugs and alcohol. But we're in a position, in a place where we can thank Him and praise Him in our right mind. And let Him know that we love Him. Oh, we still have struggles. We still have problems. We still have our everyday fights. But praise the Lord, we made it, church. We're in the winner's circle. And He's with us. Praise the Lord. I said we're in the winner's circle. And He's with us.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Go ahead and keep singing, Brother Gene. Come on up here. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I asked Brother Gene the other day, I want him just to do a devotion here. I love this man of God, and I'm glad that the Lord's brought him over here for this time. More Haven Church of God's been a big help. Not only here at the church, but on a personal level as well. He's got me out of a jam or two. I'm talking about making like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with as much stickiness that I had. And I needed to get out of a jam. The Lord's help me. Come on. And I thank God for him. So give me your undivided attention. I know he sought God's heart on this. And he's just going to he's gonna share what the Lord laid on his heart. Thank you. I just want to thank the Lord that I woke up this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right. You know, I have to admit, I'm pretty tired, but you know what? Yes. When we are weak, He is strong. Amen. Uh, I'll find my page here. Hallelujah. But, you know, Brother Terry's been preaching on a lot of things, you know. We done went over everything pretty much already. But, uh, you know, I'm going to read this scripture John, John 10 and 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Uh, yes. The Lord is our shepherd. We are sheep. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if we don't have our shepherd, we'll be lost. You know, yes. uh, you know uh, just ask. You know, if you want the Holy Ghost, just ask him. You know, be, be in bitter. Be in town. You know, uh, not praying through, you know. Pray more than five minutes. <laughs> pray through, uh, justify, coming and leaving the same. Where are you? Why are you holding back? You know the the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Big G comes to give, heal, and build. And I borrowed that one. Praise the Lord. And uh, John uh, ten and nine. It says, I am the door. Yes. By me, if any man enters, he shall be saved. Yes. And shall go in and out and find pastors. Yes, he will. Praise the Lord. You know, when I when I got saved, uh, I kept on knocking on the door. And, you know, I didn't get saved in the church. I got saved at an evangelist's house. You know, yes. it's one we support. Yes. But, uh, you know, I was, I was being drawn. To the, to the house, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, you know the, the the church, you know, is it's us here, the buildings right here, you know, yeah. the temple is, right, and you know, the devil's a liar. He comes in all shapes and forms. You know? What it says right here, brother. And uh, you know, I just think about people that you know, <laughs> brother Corey said it last night. Yeah. Keep on coming and sitting on the pew. Yeah. You come in. You, you lead the same way. You, you, you don't worship the Lord. It's, it's a commandment to worship the Lord. Uh, man, I don't know where I'd be without him right now. I, 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 thank, I thank him. I thank him every day. You know, every minute. You know, I was at the graveyard today, and I was sitting there, and the thought came on my mind. All them people that died, that there's, there's all ages, from small babies to teenagers. And I was thinking, I said, what would they say right now while they're in that graveyard? You know, some went to heaven, you know, some went to hell. What would they say right now? You know, you know, uh, the the Lord, you know, he's got he's got patience and I thank God for mercy because he had mercy for me. You know, it, you know, when I was out there in that old that old coat, you know, I ain't gonna go there, but you know, hey. I've been there too. Sometimes you got to get lost before you get found. That's right, brother. Uh, That's right. You know, uh, the only way that you're going to, you know, you tap into that, that, that living water, that, right. that water you'll never thirst again, is right there at the altar. You know, and um, I want to read this, this verse right here, Genesis 7, 16. And they went in. They went in male and female of all flesh. 
as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. If you keep on coming to church and not, you know, not worshiping God, you know, I ain't trying to be a dictator or nothing like that. I'm trying to show you love. Like, you know, uh, the Lord loved me, you know, he, he led me, you know, uh, I don't know where I'd be without him. I sure would be here right now talking Come to you right now. You know, this is my biggest fear of getting up here talking to you. And that's, that's, you know, he didn't give us a, a fear, you know, that, you know, if we fear him, you know, he he's not going to do nothing for us. If you're going to be ashamed to come up to this altar and, and worship and try to seek God to get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Where I was going to get it off to in the first place is about being saved. Yeah. You come here every, every, night, every night of this service. Yeah. You come to church. You come up here. You pray five minutes. Right. You know, it took me, uh, let's see, 2020, it, it took me five years to get the Holy Ghost. I, I kept on knocking on that door. Yeah. You got to yeah. knock on that door. You got to talk. You got to move them lips. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to be up here talking, you know, uh, with my lips and far away from my heart. I want to come from my heart. Because, you know, Jesus didn't have to get up on that cross and, and, and get beat, cut, spit on, mocked, everything. You know, and while I read this one about shutting the door, you know, if, you know, if you keep on messing around, you know, you keep on coming to church, you know, the Lord's going to end up giving you a rubber bait mind, you know. He ain't going to hear you. And, and you wonder why you can't get your prayers answered, you know, because you keep on playing with that world out there. You know, that's that's being an enemy of God if you're playing with that world. Come on. You know, if you just anchor down, you know, get in there, you know, come to this altar. I can't I can't stress that enough. But what I'm saying is that, you know, God was tired, you know, of man. He made man. He, he grieved them. So. You know, it agreed him. He had God had a repentance, you know. So he he was wanting to destroy the you know the world. He he wanted to bring that flood. You know, what I'm saying, you keep on holding back, you know. The Lord, there was eight people out of all them people, you know. The world Noah preached 120 years and they laughed at him. They was doing evil, you know, but when it started to rain, they, they didn't believe it was going to rain. It, it never rained before, you know. So it started raining, and uh, the Lord shut the door. He sealed it, you know. He He took the, the breath of life, you know. You know, our days are numbered here, you know. When you take that last breath, you better know who your master is. Is it going to be God or is it going to be the devil? You know, <laughs> you ain't going to get nothing sitting on the pew. You got to get up and worship him. You know, I ain't perfect. God's perfect. I know we all, you know, have flaws, you know. But you know what? I'm going to repent. I'm going to make up for it. If, if I'm wrong with somebody, I'm going to go make it right with it. You know what? I want to be that good example for my daughter. You know, I, I love her to death. And I thank God where he's brought me from. And I got custody of her. I thank you. I thank them, but I want to be that good example. Good example, You know, if I was, if I had the Holy Ghost, which I do have the Holy Ghost, I make sure that every time I got up here, that my daughter would see me come to that altar on, and praise Be God, and put my hands up right in the there. air, Hallelujah! and see everything that I do, because you know, they come watch on. that, yeah. they look up to right, that. Brother. You know, right. you got to be an example for your children. Yeah, I would, I pray to God that every kid in here gets the Holy Ghost, gets yeah. filled with the Holy Ghost, Jesus, brother. sanctified. I, I, I love Jesus. Yeah. I thank God where He's brought me from. Yeah, yeah I've been down that wrong, that that long road. You know, it's a, it was a bumpy road, yeah. but you know what? Oh, yeah. I found my way to this altar right here. Yeah. Well, I found my way to to that house. You know, got saved. But you know what? I kept on knocking. You know, you ain't you ain't going to get in there. You know what I'm saying is that the door, the, the Lord. You got to open your heart to the Lord. You know, because you know what? He he'll shut the door on you. He he will shut the door on you. Just like them eight people on that and all them animals. So I just want to thank God, and I just want to tell y'all to keep on pressing on. Keep yeah. on going towards that cross right there. Nail it to that cross right there. Come on. It's right here. This is where it's at. You walk in this church to serve the Lord, leave this church, and 
serve the Lord. You, you can get the Holy Ghost out there on the street. I got the Holy Ghost in the choir. Come on. You know? yeah. I thank God. Man, I just can't stress enough. Just keep on coming to the altar. Pray more. I mean, seek him. Not just for five minutes. He's the only one. When you take that last breath, no. that's where it comes. Amen. Praise the Lord of glory. I'll tell you what. I'd rather sit there and hear somebody tell me what i got to do. Come on. Sit there and sugarcoat everything that I'm doing and let me know it's okay. I'd much rather hear it just like that. Basically, tell it right how, how it is. And I love the balance because I'm being able to witness a man who has evangelized for many, many years be able to take what was just said. And then as I said, come in and pour oil in. That makes me go ahead and not only receive, but also be healed. Come on. And give me the ability and the power to live it out accordingly. This isn't a game. This is nope. life. Amen. It isn't the game of life. Nope. It is life. And life is living in faith every day. Living in faith every day. Praise the come Lord. On. Hallelujah. Well, I'll tell you what, I thank God for Sister Bowling, and uh, I know I'm starting to feel a little warmer up here, I don't see <laughs> oh, no. Amen, I'm telling you right now, I said, Lord, just the two degrees, Lord, have mercy. I, she has been a blessing here to this church and to my wife and uh, just our family, and such a, 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 a wonderful woman of God who has a word of wisdom, and and keep you on your toes, too. Praise the Lord. I've been enjoying the time of fellowship we've been having out here. And uh, and I want to personally say thank everybody that has partaked in giving us this food and, and blessed with the food. And uh, I thank God for, for what he's been doing. I thank God for this family and getting to know them. It's hard just in a week, and you can say the 10 hours that we normally do, but being able to really sit down and, and uh, know they were able to show a car off over there at Swamp Cabbage. And pastor so out of shape and tired and hot, had to go home. So Lord have mercy for I made it over there. But but I'm glad. And, uh, and if it's all right, I can stand up and go ahead and testify and brag on Jesus. Will you do that, please, sister? Go ahead. I love the Lord. I'm so glad for what he means to me. Yes. So glad that over 48 years ago, he saved me. Woo! Praise the Lord. Come on. There's never been a time that I've ever wanted to backslide. Never wanted... I've made mistakes. We all make mistakes. But uh, as the brother said, we've got to repent. We've got to repent daily. I do, every day. And I just appreciate him and the goodness of God. He's been so faithful. He has kept us. No, no, no. There's a lot of things in life that my husband and I both sacrificed, but that's okay because it's for the Lord. So one day, one day, I'll have it all. I'm so grateful for God. Come on. Sister Laura, stand up and brag on Jesus. <laughs> there, hey, there, there's a lot of getting pastor back here. Here, it's okay. I can tell you. <laughs> Go ahead and brag on Jesus. Uh, I thank God for what He's doing in my life. Yes. I've experienced new things in this past year. Right. He's doing a new thing in my heart, and I believe God has done it. Yeah, my man. He's not saved yet. He's working on it. Hallelujah. He's been in church only about five times in the last year, opposed to one. Come on, man. Bring it. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And I thank God and uh, thank God for what He's doing. Love Byron too. Amen. I know He's a good man. And uh, just keep praying for that family as well. Well, I'm going to go ahead and receive an offering. I got my little buddy up here, little Milo. Amen. If he can come on up here, praise the Lord. And where is what's Justice doing? Hiding back there? Cutty Corral. Down there in the middle. Brother Perry, will you help us again? 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, I know. Praise. They're doing a good job. Look at him. Praise on. God. He's not showing the offering plate. He's like, look, I already had it. <laughs> Once again, um, there is nothing that God will pull back or refuse to give us. We will lack nothing through our obedience. Come on. And pastors never had to beg one dime from the church. Never had to say, please, 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 or if you don't, this is going to happen. I just allow the Spirit of God to deal with your hearts. And I know the Lord lays something on your heart and you end up uh, going out the door and you didn't pay it out or you didn't give it out. He's going to mess with you more than I will. <laughs> You'll be driving down the road and say, okay, well, next time, next time. But I promise you this, you can never outgive God. And I've seen blessings come through. And what this does is really, in all reality, this money has no value whatsoever. Yeah, I want you to all understand that economics of, of this life. You say, no, Pastor, that's $20. No. See, the $20 is what you use to get something. And in all reality, you can have something that's worth $20 and you can get it for $10. You understand what I'm telling you? $20 is $20. But in the, uh, the very hands of God, he turns it and turns it and multiplies it and grows it and allows that initial investment of life to go a lot further than we ever thought that we could bring it and, and, and use it in that capacity. So once again, I want you all to give out a heart of love. And I, mean, I'm, I'm, I can tell you as a pastor, I'm so excited to see what God's doing for this man and, and being able to invest in his ministry. And I'm, I'm glad I get to be the rooster in the old uh, in his own church to say, "Wow, praise the Lord!" Yeah. I'm never. I mean, just I'm telling you, more Haven Church God's a heavy hitter. Praise the Lord when it comes to obedience in this capacity. We can sit there and help missionaries beyond measure and just see what He's done. And I thank God for the obedience. I want to ask my brother Perry, right where you are, brother. Go ahead and pray over this offering. Oh, once again. Oh, you always supply. Amen. Give us a given to the Lord.
trying to talk Sister Judy. I had another song playing last night, and then the order of the service was was flipped around, and they sang a wonderful, wonderful um, sitting here praying song and altar call. But I want to try to encourage her and make sure she gets up there Friday night. So if you see her, encourage her. Let her know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I love you, Sister Judy. Hey, let's give Sister Judy a hand clap of all stars.
snook fishing or something, the frog gigging, come on. It's actually the 10th night of a revival. It started 11 days ago. He has helped you. Let's go ahead and show that by hand clap of appreciation. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. All the honor is deep, bro. Praise God. I do hope when you head off on your adventure that you'd remember more Haven Church. Oh, yeah. And we're in your prayers and we will continue to pray for you. And uh, we're going to allow the, the whole sweet Holy Ghost. We're going to allow him to lead us and guide us. And I want you to know we will, even though, you know, depending on what happens, this church is going to be safe from the hands of God. Yeah. We will continue on with this revival. There's been some coals that's been stoked. Some wind's been blowing. Come on. We're ready. The further ado. There you go. Thank you. Amen. 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 Give me as much monitor as you can. Turn it. Turn it. Amen. That means you to be saved. Amen. Come on. Amen. Heaven. Amen. Heaven's going to be great. Amen. Now, I've said it before. I don't want to die, but I'm not afraid to be dead. Come on. Those whom I believe, I trust in the Lord, that heaven will be great. I asked my mom when I was a little boy, there's going to be go-karts there. I wanted go-karts so bad. Come on. She said, well, I don't know if there will be. I end up getting had to, but uh, it will be wonderful. Come on. You think about going to that river of life and just dipping down into it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Look up the stream, Brother Perry's got his feet in it. It don't matter. Come on. It's all clean. It's all clean. Yeah. Hey, man, it'll be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Got a mother, dad, in laws there, brother. Hey, man, we got friends. And I've got so many preacher friends that passed away that I've known. It'll be great. Hey, man, let's live right. Come on. Right. Right. Praise God. Thank you for the good food last night. Just wonderful. Yes. Amen. And uh, yes. we appreciate so much for that. Brother Perry did a wonderful job. Amen. And uh, Brother Gene's sister did a great job on that stew. Man, that was good. Oh, my. So we're not saying what we have tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. Yeah. So we say thank you for all the good food, everything. Brother Bolo's trying to say something. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow, we're going to invite all of Moorhaven Church of Godian <laughs> to praise the Lord afterwards. We're still going to have our shindig on Friday night with the hot dogs. But we'll make sure that all of you can come out there and eat. We'll make sure that 
sure there's enough food all the way through. Oh, yeah. But uh, I just want the family, I want the Moorhead Church of God to know that you are invited tomorrow night. Of course, Friday night as well. Yeah. We'll have everybody but you, please, uh, tomorrow night, okay? And uh, so we just, yeah. let, that way I don't have to go around and tell everybody tomorrow and just let them know now. Okay. We have a round steak tomorrow night. Yeah, we are. That's baloney. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> All right, help me here tonight, St. Matthew chapter 15, verse starting with verse 22. I mean, it's going to help me preach. Yeah. John. This is a wonderful story. St. Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, talking about Jesus. She said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Wow. Look at this. But he answered her not a word, ignored her. Right. His disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent out unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Yeah. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Uh, really? Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Praise the Lord. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from the very hour. Amen. I want to preach a little while here on great faith. Let's pray, everybody. Let's pray. Oh, God, love you. Have your way around me. Oh, God, love 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 me. Accomplished, minister of the needs in her presence. Help me, your servant, to deliver. Be an instrument in your hand. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everybody said, You may be seated. Hallelujah. It's dangerous for the devil when the church becomes one. Dangerous for the old devil when we melt together and we band in unison. It's worse for the devil when we have unity of faith and doctrine and standard. Jesus said to her, Great is thy faith. That wasn't some novice speaking. That wasn't just a nobody saying that. That wasn't some uninformed somebody. Amen. That was Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. And Jesus labeled and identified this account and this situation involving great faith. Praise God. Jesus never threw words around. Jesus never had to drop names to try to be somebody. Jesus always knew what he was talking about. He never lied. He never told a white lie. He never joked. He never talked out of the corner of his mouth when he said it. It was right. He never wasted words. 
He never wasted time. He was Jesus, born of a virgin, conceived of the Holy Ghost. Ancient 12 confound of the doctors and men of law. Worked in a carpenter shop with his dad. Preached for three and a half years. Spoke 30 parables. Amen. Walked on water. Calmed the storms and the rains. Healed the sick. Raised the dead. Cleansed the leper. That's who we're talking about. Can you say amen? What would it feel like for you if Jesus told you great is thy faith? Right. Oh my. I can tell you tonight, I don't need a pat on the back. I don't have to be lifted up. I don't have to have nobody's approval. I don't need a PhD in theology. I need a fresh touch. I need a great awakening and a rebaptizing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Praise God. The devil wants to do to deceive us he wants to steal from us he wants to rob us he wants to change our direction amen we are not doubters we are not critical we are not pessimistic we are not unbelievers we are children of the most high God and we can ask what we will and it shall be done Say Hallelujah. There's more to faith than name it, claim it. There's more to faith than blab it and grab it. There's more to faith than smooth talking and cliches and hocus pocus phrases. There's more to faith than positive mental attitude. There's more to faith than just now or never, do or die, sink or swim. Faith is staying there until something happens. Faith is reaching up and grabbing nothing and holding on to it until God shows up. Can you say that? Faith is not always right now. It's not always a spontaneous growth. It's not just that. Easter Sunday morning attendance of way over what we normally have. Right. 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 Jesus' first miracle ever done by Jesus was for a select lady right. Right. called his mother. That's right. Come on. Mary. No doubt. She was accused and ridiculed by having a baby without being married. Come on. I could just hear her being criticized and get those yeah. stares from people. I could hear her consoling Jesus when he learned about it and begin to question his mother, what about this? I'd say she probably said, Jesus. Don't worry about all the talk. Come on. Because I know who your daddy is. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, I know who your daddy is. The Holy Ghost can see through her brought forth the firstborn son. Come on. Oh, the son of God. Amen. She was just an earthen vessel filled with a heavenly habitation, just a purified virgin used to bring Jesus Christ into this world. See, man. Amen. But when I love this text tonight that I read, it was Jesus in this text that said to that woman, It is great faith. 
Amen. The man that said that was not Kenneth Copeland. No, come on. It was not Reverend Ike. It was not the speaker Robert Schuller. This was not T.D. Jakes talking. This was not Billy Graham talking. Come on. This was Alpha and Omega and Beginning and the End and the Bridge over to the Water and the Counselor and the Deliverer. Amen. It was the Son of the Living God that told that woman, Great is that faith. Amen. She really was not even allowed and supposed to encounter Jesus. She was not under the covenant. She was not under the pavilion. Amen. Patriotic history of that day. She was not a Jew. She had not one Old Testament promise. She could not approach him without one verse. She had not one chapter, not one scripture. But she invaded the holy terrain of Jesus Christ. And she did it with boldness and kindness and serenity, praise God. This lady, praise God, she knew nothing. She was a nobody. Amen. But to get what she wanted, she had to discount the disadvantages. She had to just say, hey, I'm not a Jew. But she fought her way over the promise, over the covenant, over the blood. And why she needed a miracle. She needed deliverance for her daughter, praise God. She needed what Jesus had. Amen. She knew she didn't deserve this approach. She knew she never deserved anything. She knew she never had the right to get anything from him. She was not intimidated by a bunch of Jews standing around with long noses and beards. Amen. Come on. Her daughter delivered. She got hungry. She got thirsty. Amen. You cannot keep a loser up. And you cannot keep a winner down. Can you say amen? If you pray and you make room for God, he's going to do something. Right? Come on. Come on. All the answers on the way, this I know. Jesus said it, I believe it, and it's so. Come on. Our Heavenly Father knows our needs before we pray. And you can rest assured the answers on the way. When I was sick last month for five weeks, never preached for six weeks. I mean, I was sick. I, I wanted to die. That's how sick the feeling was. I mean, it's like almost passing out. It's it's vomiting. It's on everything you think of. It was horrible. Amen. But listen. It doesn't matter if you're born on the other side of the track. It doesn't matter if the genes in your a body are from a bad blood. Come on. It don't matter if your folks were divorced when you were 10 years old. It don't matter if you were raised poor. Amen. Come on. Take that encounter with Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Amen. at the feet of the Savior himself. Amen. Act like it. Think Come on. like it. Praise God.
not legally able. That's right. Right, brother. But she got what she wanted. Amen. Amen. You don't have to take the tough kid. You don't have to play second fiddle. You don't have to give up. You don't have to crawl dead on God. You don't have to get crossways. You don't have to throw in the towel. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Quit whining around about this and that. Amen. I know 